while our officers are facing an increasingly dangerous environment, we are seeing a growing debate about so-called warrior cops, a term that I've heard, and the militarization of police. Now, folks, uh, let's be honest, let's be honest. I grew up in a law enforcement family. Maybe there was a day when if a man was asked for an ass whooping, it's a cop's job to give it to him, yeah? Well, that day is gone. If it ever existed, it's gone today. There is no action you can engage in that will not be on CNN and YouTube tomorrow morning. You don't have to like it. You got to accept it. It's called reality. There's cameras and umpires everywhere. What we want in a, in, a, in a modern liberal democracy is we want to turn violence on and off like a faucet. The only way you make a frightened person react in a certain way is to drill it into them, to make it a conditioned response. Men in Kevlar vests and helmets, camouflage, carrying automatic rifles, moving in tactical armored vehicles. These aren't American troops on the battlefield, but police in Ferguson. One observer says he thought he saw police in an MRAP. It's part of what the ACLU, in a recent report, called the excessive militarization of American policing. These new eyes in the sky are raising some concerns about law enforcement's capability for surveillance. This is the Matrice 200 series. DJI's most rugged, reliable, and versatile commercial aircraft to date. It's state-of-the-art technology that can go where police, firefighters, and paramedics can't. To that end, each is tricked out with three high-def tilt-and-zoom cameras, as well as thermal imaging, and that makes some people nervous. They could be flying the drone outside here, right, while we're talking and they're looking in the window. Vic Walsack, the director of the American Civil Liberties Union in Pittsburgh, has concerns about their surveillance capabilities, especially by law enforcement. This is a, a, a significant expansion on the police department's ability to invade people's privacy. Saying that you don't care about privacy because you've got nothing to hide is no different than saying you don't care about freedom of speech because you've got nothing to say. That's a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of rights and what privacy really is, what it's for. Privacy isn't about having something to hide. Privacy is about having something to protect. And that's a free and open society. That thing is liberty. You know, a lot of people are worried about government agencies spying on them, but they don't seem to be worried about Google or AT&T who are handling their data minute by minute, and in fact, can do pretty much whatever they want with it. Labeled one of New York City's weirdest and most iconic skyscrapers, 33 Thomas Street has been a source of mystery for many years. Constructed and owned by AT&T, this faceless concrete tower has been linked to the NSA. Many are calling this skyscraper the most terrifying building in the world. Tom Hankshore thinks so. He was taking a stroll in Lower Manhattan when he spotted the building and tweeted, this is the scariest building I've ever seen. What goes on inside? His tweet sent social media into a frenzy of speculation. It's the Men in Black headquarters. I have definitely heard that there's maybe some secret government stuff in there. What is it that people find menacing? Notice, no windows. Not one window on any of its 29 floors. Those aren't windows, they're giant air vents. So what gives? Well, we can now solve the mystery, or at least part of it. Turns out the building is owned by AT&T and it doesn't have any windows for a reason. It may be the only skyscraper in New York City built to withstand a nuclear blast. 
There's reportedly enough food, water, and generator fuel to sustain 1,500 people for two weeks. The skyscraper is located at 33 Thomas Street in Lower Manhattan. According to a recent documentary, Project X, the building houses AT&T's telecommunications infrastructure and also serves as a listening post for the NSA, the super secret national security agency. When approaching facility, ring the buzzer and wait for admittance. Just look at the building. It's got no windows. It looks like something from a space movie. The building is very sensitive to the sun and temperature, so that's why you have these big vents that you can regulate, like basically a big air conditioner. The main entrance is right here. When I walked inside and tried to get more answers, security told me the place was off limits to cameras. For most of us, GPS is just how we get driving directions, but it's much more than that. If our GPS satellites were damaged, it could take down everything from electricity to transportation to our phones. This is a major national security issue. It is a major economic issue. Starting route to 50. The same GPS technology that gives us driving directions through our phones also makes us vulnerable. Congressman John Garamende says attacks or interference with GPS satellites could take out 911 systems nationwide, make ATM machines and credit cards useless, keep airplanes grounded, and even disrupt the country's electrical grid. It can happen, and it has happened. He says last year a GPS spoofing attack made it appear as though 20 ships in the Black Sea were instead at the Sochi airport. Another potential danger, GPS jamming devices. You jam it around an airport, around a port. Ships won't be able to dock, planes won't be able to land. Dr. William Cressy, a fraud expert with Governor State University, points to a 2013 incident. A worker evading his boss's GPS tracker on a company truck used the jamming device while at Newark Airport. The device crippled the airport. Planes could not take off or land. Cressy says GPS jammers can actually be purchased online. I think it would be a wise move to somehow regulate the sale and use of GPS jammers. They are being abused for this reason. And it's going to sit here and try to acquire satellites and not be able to get them. GPS jammers, he says, can shut down alarm systems on ATM machines and create havoc with financial markets. We are one of the only countries in this world that does not have a terrestrial-based uh, backup system. Countries like China and Russia have backup systems in case of attacks or other failures. The U.S. does not. You are entering one of the most secret places on Earth. It's a bunker built into a hollowed-out mountain in Colorado. It's just one of the top secret shelters where 7,000 Americans will go to in the event of nuclear annihilation. The government built more than 100 of these bunkers and relocation facilities around the country. There's no room for families. Wives, children not included. The plans to get a small number of government officials out of Washington, out of major cities, and into these uh, bunkers around the country. And it doesn't include families. Garrett Graff is the author of the new book, Raven Rock. U.S. government's secret plan to save itself while the rest of us die. Another bunker is buried in Virginia at a place called Mount Weather. This is the Mount Weather facility about 60 miles west of Washington, D.C., and it looks like a typical secure government facility. It is surrounded by a chain link fence with a barbed wire at the top. Armed security patrol the entrance to a doomsday bunker that's reserved for the wealthy elite. Since the uh, election of Donald Trump, we've seen a whole new demographic of people calling in, people that didn't know we existed before. Larry Hall is the owner of the Survival Condo Project. These 16,000 pound doors lock you inside. We're heading deep below the surface of the earth into an underground bunker like no other. We are in a typical full floor residential unit and even though we are more than 100 feet underground right now, you can see that it's certainly not a claustrophobic area. 12 luxurious condos exist here with fireplaces, high-end appliances, jacuzzis, even windows. Yes, windows. High-definition TVs broadcast a live feed of the outside world right into your living room. And look at this. It's a swimming pool with a slide and waterfall. 
Other common areas include a movie theater, rock climbing wall, and shooting range. There's even a farm that grows all the fresh fruits and vegetables you'll need. This can grow up to 70 different uh, species of plants, lettuces, uh, tomatoes, carrots. The bunker runs on power sources like wind and diesel generators. We have enough fuel to run these diesels for two and a half years. 